Thanks for staying with us on the Sports Bank Zone. We turn our attention to the ever-changing landscape of sports psychology, a topic that has rose to prominence in recent times. Increasingly, athletes from the various sporting disciplines have been engaging in conversations around mental health issues and the impact sports psychology has on their performances. It's easy to deduce the importance of these conversations to the success and wellness of athletes. Dr. Olivia Rose, a licensed applied sports psychologist, has been a regional leader in stressing the importance of her field in developing strong minds for competition. Her most recent publication entitled Game Changer, Guided Student Athletes Journal is aimed specifically for student athletes at all levels. The journal seeks to provide an outlet for them to explore the realm of self-awareness in order to improve their academic and athletic pursuits. Well, instead of depending on our summary of the material, we're pleased to be joined by Dr. Olivia Rose in the studio. Dr. Rose, let me get right to it because the first thing that struck me about this book is that is a whole lot of blank pages what's going on <laughs> yes it's a whole lot of blank pages thanks for having me because it's a tool for self-development it's a it's a tool to document and map your progress or the lack thereof and assess and evaluate where and what you need to do to enhance your performance not just in sport but also in your schoolwork and and your academic life yeah I, i'll just ask you to open the book and give us an example um of exactly what you were talking about in terms of mapping progress and all of that great excellent so right here we have preparing with a purpose which in other words we call goal setting but we have preparing with a purpose for training goals and we have for study goals or school goals so there are two sides of it and then for the let's say we have what what would be a practice goal that the athlete wants to achieve and then the practice goal would be in line for the upcoming competition mm -hmm. so the practice goal would go in line to help you to accomplish the upcoming competition goal and it's dated and you document that so, so for example a practice goal could be i want to attend training every day for the next two months every day but more than attending being on time because that's where we get discipline and so on mm -hmm. and then the upcoming competition goal would be i guess to oh, to to in, improve or um improve your performance because mm -hmm. i'm just thinking of all types of sports and then 13 sports are floating around in my head <laughs> so um let's say for track and field you want to um in, improve the time for mm -hmm. a particular race so therefore you coming to training on time and every day and putting in work would be um, something that you could put for a practice goal or improving your starting and different parts of what you would do in training so that it helps with you achieving your overall competition goal. But then I could go further to, let's say, after competition. So there's one that happens on the day of competition, not mm -hmm. during, because you know we're not going to be walking around with this book on <laughs> during a competition. But then competition morning, day, you know, you wake up, you can document how you feel, etc. Mm -hmm. And then even if you don't feel a particular way, what is it that are within your control that you can um, assess and make the most of? So you are in control of your thoughts, even if you think it's going to be a hectic day or a hectic match. And then after you've competed. We have where you now become the reflective athlete after competition. What was it a win, lose, or draw, depending? Um, but usually I don't really ask it that way, but we want to find out outcome just because you're going to go back to look at your, your goal to see if you'd have achieved it. And you, it may be a loss, but you could have accomplished a time goal. So that's good progress that you can feel proud. And we, of course, have celebrating the wins at a completely different page as well. And it does the same for upcoming examination, midterm um, exam um, test and so on. So you can still use the approach. And most importantly, it allows you to be deliberate in not just setting goals, but we use different techniques. So there is an element where imagery is used in the aspect of the letter to the future self. And then, you know, how Maybe you're congratulating yourself for doing so well. And then you read it back and you say, oh my gosh, you know, I have done this. And not only that, it specifically asks you to 
find who you need to, to support you in achieving this goal. So you're not out there on your own. And it prompts you to say, when are you going to make contact with this person? Have you made contact with the person? And it goes the same for school. Because what happens is that having worked with student athletes um, over the years, they don't normally reach out. Some of them don't normally reach out for help until it's too late yes. or until it's too further down in the semester. And then nobody knew that they had this challenge and then they'll say that I didn't know I could do that I didn't know I could ask for help and it's the same thing too even in in sports where sometimes the goal that they have for themselves is so secretive and they have not shared it with the coach and then the coach is unaware that they have this goal and so there can be some incongruence as it relates to goal attainment yeah L let me just get this quickly so if I'm understanding you well you're saying that this book will simplify the process to success for these student athletes. Mm. Very good. That's exactly what it does, but it does not substitute for working with a trained sports psychologist, <laughs> such as myself and other persons in the region. But it is really a component that I also use with the athletes that I work with because the reason I ended up writing this or compiling these worksheets and putting it together um, in this journal is because from time to time I would give athletes um, assignment or homework to do for, to prepare them for the next session and I couldn't find a student athlete journal so I compiled some of what I was doing added some more things revised it and of course the whole component of gratitude would be very important remembering that you're a whole person and you know acknowledgement of holistic self-development is what's included here mm -hmm. for student athletes of all ages um, because goal setting is very important and it goes a far way, especially when you write it down. So you can always be writing it down. And I try to make it um, not too, um, it is simplistic and life can be simple, but the, attaining the goals may have some challenges. Mm. You said student athletes about five or six times already, and I'm going to ask you about that quickly. but. Um, T tell me first, how long did it take you to prepare this for publication? That's a brilliant question. So, like, every day I had a goal yes. to complete the student <laughs> athlete journal yes. that kept on going over into the other day, into the other day. But then, you know, as I realized that we're going to, especially in Jamaica, um, start the schoolboy um, football yes. competitions, yeah. And I know that I have some schools on waiting lists for over five years. And there is not enough of me and the other persons like myself to go around. So I said, this is my small way in trying to package it. This is my way of trying to package some of what I do. Remember, it doesn't substitute. But then I really want to, to um, encourage coaches to incorporate this in their training sessions. And I know I have some coaches on board already who are helping with the process and principals who have come on board. I know for a fact that there's a uh, Magati High School that the principal has agreed that he would help in ensuring that use, utilization of the journal is incorporated in training and guide them along because we need to um, encourage a culture of reading and writing and working. Yeah, I'm not sure if I, I got the time though that it took you to put it together. Properly. The time is a long time. About, 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 because it kept going over and over into another, it's, it started about a year ago. Okay. All right. Um, it is very obvious that based on your, your application of what you do as a sports psychologist, um, a lot of things will remain constant in the sense of how, how you, you apply the things. So I say that to ask this. Is this game changer specifically designed for a student athlete much different from how you would treat a senior athlete or an adult who is competing internationally? It's designed for all types of student athletes based on the different levels that they are, which is why it took me so long because I tried to, even though it's, it's in a simple form, I autographed it recently for a student who was leaving to, to do his master's. And it's a book that I know they'll use because I've heard, even especially at the tertiary level where I'm based primarily, um, where student athletes would, who 
didn't see me for whatever reason based on scheduling and so on would say, you know, I need to come and set my goals with you this time because they've realized that it works. Also, I think it was um, recently in an interview with Sharika Jackson, she was, uh, she, she showed, she asked the cameraman to, to zoom in on her goals that she wrote on a little piece of paper. paper yeah. So you can still put it in a nice little combined journal like this and still change the game. Mm. Yeah. I want to ask as well the, the, the fact that it is a, a game changer, as it said, for, for student athletes and, and primarily for teenagers, but you've said it spans different sports, so it's not just, it, it, it embodies all sporting events that, that and young age athletes, groups too. And age groups, yeah. yeah. But is, is it that you mentioned off here that a lot of teenagers don't read anymore? And maybe it is fashioned in a way that won't require too much reading, but just simply application of, of notes and as you would do a journal. Is that, is that something that's troubling for you as, a, as a, a builder of the young minds? Because it is disturbing to know that teenagers don't want to read. So you have fashioned it in a way to, 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 to entice them to be a part of it without feeling burdened about reading too much. But um, is that a problem overall, that our teenagers aren't reading? <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow, that's... that's so, so, see, I'm stuttering. Um, let, me, let me get my thoughts together. So we really, it's a challenge because um, there are issues as it relates to our literacy, even amongst teenagers who you are expecting should at least by now acquire some amount of... Um, literacy ability and skills and utilize them so comprehension and so on so as ricardo said when he opened the book it was a blank book and mostly with blank pages yes, and so it, on. it does what felt as you're catering um, to but, the fact that they don't want to read ah uh, yes and no because there are some things that i send you to go and research yes so you have to go and research which is why i need um, a, a support system around to ensure that the book is utilized in the way it's intended yeah. because I know that it can really help our student athletes. Yeah. And encourage reading and writing. Mm -hmm. um, how widespread, I mean, in terms of the institutions that the book is already in, how widespread is that? Okay, so it's widespread uh, mostly in in the the urban part of the island mm -hmm. just because i live and work in that particular area but we've not forgotten the other areas and i have extended an invitation to all um schools and their student athletes at least a representative for them to come out to the launch which is tomorrow at excelsior community college at 3.30 p.m. Please yeah. be on time. I know it's traffic and so on. And so that there is reach for it. But it's also available for my Caribbean people okay. uh, on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's on Amazon. But I'm hoping to come there as well and launch and encourage you all because, you know, we are one Caribbean. Yeah, um, a, a quick story, Lance. So I, I won my first amateur tennis title in 2016, right? And mm. I had gone a couple of years without winning another one. Um, and there was a period where I was a little bit disheartened um, because I was wondering if I could win again. Yeah. Um, and then I started speaking with this lady here. Mm. Um, and we spoke for about three or four weeks in the build-up to, to my tournament. And I was having terrible results that year. And the Saturday morning, she actually came to my very first match. Didn't have a clue about tennis, um, by the way. And somehow I managed to squeeze through that match um, by winning it. But I remember a lot of the lessons that we had gone through mm -hmm. had helped me throughout that tournament. And I won it without dropping even a set. So mm -hmm. I just want to say the methods actually work. Yes. Um, and I can say that as someone who has benefited from it. Yeah. So I, I actually heard um, Bridget thank Foster you. Hilton thank, on, thank you. on TVJ Sports coverage yeah. of the Budapest World Championship saying that in 2009 she had employed a, a sports psychologist for yes. the first time. Yes. And she suggested that people didn't know. I think she was just saying it for the first, first time. time. Mm -hmm. And she won the gold yeah. in Berlin 2009. 
So it was a good advert for the value of a sports psychologist. Yeah, for sure, without a doubt. Dr. Olivia Rose, we wish you all the success with this book and with the launch of it on Thursday. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for putting that together. All right. We Thank take you. a break. <laughs> can, can we see the book before you go? Oh, you want to see just... another shot of the book? Yeah. <laughs> game changer. It is a game changer indeed. Lance has been a game changer for a long, long time, you know. And on Thursday, we're going to be having at the track big stories um, coming up. A third $1 million stakes win in the USA for Florida based Barbadian trainer Safi Joseph. On a weekend that the 36 year old wins a fourth consecutive spring summer trainers title at Gulfstream Park. Your horse racing show at the track Thursdays on the Sportsman Zone. Nice article will be there.